right, a little wine drinking people. It's good to see our good friend Francesco Mazzai in the store. And uh, we've done a couple wine seminars, wine blending seminars with this guy. And man, what a great guy. And just, uh, you know, I'm glad I, he was in town again. And unfortunately, we couldn't set up an event with him. But the next time he comes back, we are going to do a vertical collector's dinner with Siepi, one of their top wines. And, you know, these guys got a lot of new stuff going on. The Mix 36, which is a new wine, which has got 36 different variations of Sangiovese, third generation Sangiovese, rich and beautiful, elegant. This wine's aged in six uh, tonneaux, only six tonneaux, rather, the entire production, so very limited. And um, yeah, we're going to be getting some in the market. And uh, fill up the other wine, which is new. And this is a winery that has a history that goes back several generations. And, you know, some very important people throughout uh, their History, Philip being the gentleman that was good friends with Thomas Jefferson. Philip might say they even made a commemorative postage stamp for this guy. He is the one that, um, you know, helped create the phrase, all men are created equal, or credited for creating that phrase. Anyways, uh, we've got a long history with this family in this country. And actually, he was the guy that came here and helped him plant vineyards in his Virginia home. So um, the Matsey wine is very highly regarded uh, by the first American patriots. The first wine was their rosé, and this is from their property in Maremma near Morlino de Scanzano. And it's so close to the sea, you get a lot of that influence, even a briny character in this wine. This is a blend of Sangiovese and Syrah. Just a few hours on the skin, so they got a light pink color there. And um, also spends a little time on the leaves to give it a little structure. And this wine is a nice, fresh, fruity bouquet, red berry fruit with a touch of fresh earth and dried flowers. Really fresh style of rosé with tangy red berry fruit and zesty mineral lace finish. And a little bit of that briny quality you get from the sea at sixteen fifty, a great little value. The Belogardo Serrata Maremma. This is a blend of Sangiovese and Alicante. And Alicante is actually indigenous to this regional. It softens the Sangiovese and brings a nice, beautiful aroma and spices. This wine spends 10 months in French and American oak barrels. They bought this property back in 1997, and their first vintage was 2001. Lots of cholesterol rocks here, which is why they wanted this area. And they had to replant the vineyard because it wasn't planted to make fine wine. Anyways, this wine's got a distinct earthiness to it, as all wines do from this region. A dark spice, fresh earth. Dark plum and cherry fruit, really smooth on the tongue. Nice berry fruits and uh, hints of spice and cocoa on the finish. A very good little wine at 1875 from the Maremma. And then the Tenuta wine, which is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 90%, 10% Cab Franc. Aged in French oak for 18 months. A good amount of dark currant, dark berry fruit, dark tobacco spice, herbs, sage. A big wine on the tongue with a good hand of that dark berry fruit and hints of dried herbs, fresh earth, smoke, and toasty oak spice. Wow, this one needs a little bit more time, though, 2005, even though it's, you know, it's uh, uh, showing some evolution here. This wine could age a little longer, but it's got, you know, some some um, nice round tannins in it and showing nicely right now. But uh, like I said, still got a couple years left in the bottle here. Excellent juice at $57. The Fontarutoli Chianti Classico, one of the benchmarks for Chianti Classico. This is the workhorse of the winery, a selection from 120 different parcels. Costello's made first. And then, they, that's 18 clones and 18 different selections of clones. Very complex wine with many layers. And 12 months in all French oak, 40% of which is new. And it's all made at their new facility, which is all gravity-fed, plunged down. And uh, the really delicate process, very natural. And um, the little Colorino and Malvasia Nero and Merlot in the blend here. And uh, this is nice complexity here on the nose. Damp earth, uh, fine herbs, thyme into the dark berry fruit. Nice structure. A classic vintage this 2010. And uh, yeah, the tannins in it a little smooth, but uh, this wine's still a little dry on the finish. Needs a little bit of time to come together, but has all the right stuff here. Really classic Chianti Classico at 2750 and then the Matsai Chianti Classico Serlapo Reserva up next. The great for this wine from the same vineyard, but a different site. Not quite as rocky as the Chianti Classico site. And a good amount of clay. Very densely planted here. Uh, only three clones of clan Sangiovese in this wine. 10% Merlot in the blend. The beautifully rustic style of Chianti Classico here. Made for the first time in 1980. And uh, stopped in 1994. And then brought it back in 2004. Sir Lapo is named after the member of the Matze family who was the first one to write a purchase order for Chianti Classico back in 1398. Wow, the very first mention of Chianti, a purchase order. Very balanced wine on the tongue with layers of fresh earth, dark spice, and dried herbs. Good hand of minerality in this wine also. You really notice the earth, the Tuscan earth in this, but exceptionally balanced 
Most excellent juice at $27. I may have gotten that price wrong. Anyways, um, same price as the Chianti Classico. We'll check that before we print this. And then the Matze Philippe, which is Cabernet Sauvignon. Philippe's the ancestor that I mentioned before, uh, which was brought in by Jefferson to plant his property and uh, was a very forward-thinking... Well, Tuscany was a very forward-thinking and liberal part of the world at that time. Philip was involved in politics and uh, helped create that phrase, all men are created equal, one of the most important quotes in our history. This is 50% from Fontarutoli and 50% from their property in Maremma, but 100% Cabernet Sauvignon and a very forward and thinking wine, as a matter of fact. This wine's got a thick, complex bouquet of dark currants and uh, cherry fruit, some of that brown spice and herbs, a really typical earthy character you get from Tuscany. Really nicely built wine with a good amount of dark berry fruit, tobacco spice, kind of dark truffle notes in this wine as well. Only a thousand cases produced. An excellent Cabernet at $50. And then at the end, the Badiola, which this is their entry-level wine, 92 points for the 2010, which, man, that wine blew off the shelf. This 2011, a blend of 70% Sangiovese, 30% Merlot. And I just laughed with Mr. Matze because his uh, CFE got the same score, which is one of their top wines, is the Badiolo. And um, it's not a 92-point wine, but, man, this is a great little value. Always is a fresh and fruity wine with some of that distinct Tuscan terroir, underbrush, sage, red plum fruit. Very fruity wine, really delicious berry fruit and uh, fine tannins, nice freshness. More than just a quaffer here, uh, very good little wine at $15. That's what we had to drink with our friends from Matze Winery. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.